Here we have it, one of Intel's newest iGPUs paired with the course our trusty Pentium 3. We can see that Intel has really outdone themselves, with that 9.8 near 98% of the power of a GTX Titan in terms of raw gaming performance. We are going to see just how well this chip can perform in modern titles. Now of course don't let that gone off sick colour deter you from the power this has, I am assured this is the chip to be rivalled. Ah, uh, but for real, my Core i3-6100 contains the HD530 integrated GPU. Now commonly I use its internal quick sync feature to record and benchmark the older graphics cards we see on the channel, without taking the performance hit commonly associated with trying to record these older cards. But seeing just how well it handles my onboard video encoding, I thought it was time to see how well it can handle gaming. The iGPU on this has a base frequency of of course 350MHz and shares its memory with my onboard 8GB of DDR4 2400MHz RAM. Containing 48 unified shaders, 8 ROPs and 16 TMUs, the iGPU appears on paper to have a bit more weight than the older HD variants which have a reputation for being, well, shit. In 3D Mark's Cloudgate benchmark, we scored a solid 6289, a reasonable score but still around half that of the ancient 4890t we tested just a little while ago. So, of course, with many players of Overwatch using integrated graphics, an article that I read just the other day and the inspiration for this video, let's see how well this card can compete in similar games. Up first we have Grand Theft Auto 5, running at a constant 25 FPS on foot. This surprised me as not only is the game playable for the most part, it was pegged at 100% usage, giving us an insight that these drivers for the integrated chip might actually be optimised for modern gaming. The minimum FPS of 13 was hit while driving, likely due to having to stream a lot of detail at higher resolutions. The game was even more playable in spaces such as the airport, and with our brief bit of flying, which we'll see in a moment, the card can handle flight and even some basic explosions. Some of the more demanding parts of the benchmarks here reveal the chip would likely hit the 20 FPS mark in some parts of gameplay, and turning off shadows may resolve this issue should you wish to play at the 720p resolution. Reducing the resolution to 480p gave us a much more playable experience in my opinion, as the game rarely dipped below 30 FPS and frame drops to our minimum of 27 FPS only ever occurred once. The game looked very similar to Xbox 360's version of GTA running on a standard definition TV. Fallout 4 running at low settings to 720p offered us an average of 20 FPS, not the most playable experience I've had, with minimum FPS dipping down to 14 FPS when explosions occurred, not a game I'd really want to play at these settings. Lowering the resolution to 480p gave us a much more playable 31 FPS. The FPS hovered around this mark while exploring the wasteland, and explosions and particle effects the chip powered through, only dipping just below the 30 FPS mark to 27 FPS. It provided capable FPS in towns and cities, giving us a playable experience to take on a few enemies here and there. Moving around cities didn't crush our FPS as much as I expected to, but still did hover around the 24 FPS mark. Not unplayable, but still a little bit slow. The heaviest action gave us the minimum FPS of 15. With a few config tweaks, this game would be more than playable on chip, and stock low settings return us with a playable experience of 480p. Counter-Strike Go, a competitive game where FPS is key to win. The card throughout the entire match gave us an average which hovered around the 60 FPS mark, achieving 61 FPS on average. The game was running at a default stock low settings at 720p. Performance was flawless and I was able to play through an entire match successfully with this chip. Removing Shadow to running DirectX 8 mode may boost your FPS slightly should you feel the need to get a few more FPS here or there. Up next is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. The game defaulted to a mix of low and medium settings which we ran at the standard 720p resolution. The game's aesthetics reminded me of the Xbox 360 version of the game, but ran an average of 60 FPS as opposed to 30, dipping down to minimums of 48 in the height of action. I wouldn't say the chip could keep up in the busiest situations, but these rarely occur throughout the game. For standard gameplay, the chip ran the game completely fine. Up next is Doom, a game renowned for its optimization and ability to run great on most cards. In this scenario with low settings at the 480p resolution, we can see the chip is hindered to run at an average of 16 FPS, not all too playable with this being attributed to the chip's lack of Vulcan support. Dropping the game's resolution scaling to 50% gave us a much more playable average of 30 FPS, with is not too very far below this at 26 FPS. The game didn't look too great, but in my experience, this was the only way of achieving a playable experience on the chip. Although lacking the visual fidelity I'm used to in this game, I would say it's playable and ran with virtually no issues after this change of settings to be made. 
Busy scenes resulted in virtually no slowdown, with particle effects flying around everywhere. If the card supported Vulcan as a newer API, we would like to see a major increase of FPS during our gameplay in the session. Finally, Crisis 3, the game that brings even today's gaming graphics cards to their knees. We can see the game struggles to run, only hitting averages of 17 FPS. Although still looking great in the lower settings, I wouldn't exactly call this a very playable experience. Moving too fast dropped to FPS to minimums of 12, and the game did not support a 480p resolution. However, I doubt much of a difference would be made dropping the resolution. Remember those guys who shot you full of K-Volts in Siberia? The guys who had you in lockdown? So what advantages does this chip have? Well, it's free with Intel's mid and upper range CPUs. QuickSync allows you to record a dedicated graphics card without the performance hit. Older and some newer titles were playable at 720p, and it has very low power consumption. Media encoding and basic tasks were run as intended, and drivers are Windows 10 ready. However, it is not without its disadvantages. 1080p resolution will cause you to lose too much FPS and was not playable at these settings. 480p is a challenge to play at for some in 2017, and performance is very much RAM dependent. Driver updates are also not very frequent. Well, iGPUs have certainly got better, and I could survive it if I only had this to play on. However, as long as you don't mind 30fps, you could survive with the Intel HD 530. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.